In this video, we'll ask ourselves if it makes sense to sift your coffee grounds. Welcome, my name is Patrick Rolf and this is Coffee with April. For this episode, we are, as we always do, exploring how can we make better tasting coffee with the April Brewer. And this time, in order to make it taste better, what we've done is that we're testing this, which is basically a coffee sift. So what we do is that we're basically sifting the coffee grounds after it's grounded. And it's a company based in Canada called Kruv uh, that created this fun little gadget that is by no means a new product. It's been around for quite some time. Um, it's been used in many competitions, especially in Brewers' Cup. Ben Put made it quite famous by using it, um, actually competing in the World Barista Championship in Korea, which I saw live, which was actually pretty cool, where he sifted every single shot. More about that at a different point. So what we're doing now, or basically what the industry have been discussing for quite some time is, quality of grind size. We all know that the quality of your grind size matters. Then the question is, in what different ways does it actually matter? For a long time, the industry have been discussing, we want uniformity. So we want a particle size that is as similar as possible from the bigger particles to the small particles, right? Now, that's basically where this kind of tools comes out of, right? Because initially what we did is that we we're looking at different grinders, which one gives us the most uniform grind size. That's where, for example, the EK43 came into the picture. And basically for the last years, this has been what a lot of people have been striving for. And the main argument for that is that you can extract higher, but still have a clean, tasty cup of coffee because you then, for example, take out the fines or you take out the boulders. Now, for those of you that have been following April, you know that we're not necessarily a fan of this uniformity in terms of grind size because a lot of the times when you do get a higher uniformity, the coffees can taste very kind of one noted. And this is something that we also thought about moving in using this little gadget. Uh, but first of all, before we're talking about any kind of results, we just want to show you how we're using it uh, and then also how you can be using it at home. So basically the structure is quite simple. You have three different parts that allows you to put two different sieves in on different microns basically. So you can use smaller up to finer and there's a bunch of them. I think the, the version that we have comes with five different sieves and you can buy up to 15 different ones, I think. So you could really manipulate and change the amount of particle size that you want in your finished kind of ground dose, which is really interesting. We've seen, for example, backstage in some competitions where you have competitors that are grinding out, then they're sifting out multiple layers and actually put together different constellations of this different grind size to kind of create the optimal particle distribution for their specific coffee, right? So long story short, there is a lot you can do and it is quite interesting. And what we want to do is just to show how we're currently using it and then discuss whether or not it makes coffee better. So what we have here in terms of coffee is 16 grams of a slightly finer grind size than what we're used to. If you, for example, use a Comandante, you can back down two or three clicks from what we usually recommend. Uh, we have 16 grams of coffee and the aim is to basically have a 12 gram dose. So it goes without saying that we are gonna have a little bit of waste. You could probably push this down to 14 or 14.5 grams in your initial dose before sifting and still have the right amount, but we just wanna be sure and make it consistent. So you pop it in the top. So and after popping it in, it's basically just about shaking it. Um, obviously there is some challenges here. One being, can you really do this 100% consistent if you do this multiple times? Uh, two, uh, what is the actual if most efficient way to make sure that then you get an even distribution of this? Now, an other obvious question is, is the grinder you're using feeding out the same particle size every single time you grind with it? Which we also know is a kind of a challenge. Basically, when it comes to 
particle sizes, it's complicated. Um, Kruv actually has a, a fun little tool that you can use to kind of measure the microns. Um, we tried doing that, it's a very kind of manual visual thing which doesn't really work for us, we don't think it's accurate enough. But we have a really fun little gadget coming quite soon here at April that is actually going to allow us to measure particle distribution very accurately and it will allow us in these videos to basically give you guys a bit more details as well. So now we have sifted the coffee. So we basically then have larger particles in the top shelf. We have the majority of what we're going to use in the middle shelf. And then we have a tiny, tiny amount in the bottom, basically. So from this, we're then basically are going to take 12 grams of coffee. So 12 grams of coffee, and we're gonna brew this in a classic April brewer fashion, which basically means uh, 12 grams of coffee to 200 grams of water. The water in this case is at 90 degrees Celsius. And we're gonna do our two pour structure, where we start with 100 gram pour up to 40 circle, and then in the center up to 100. And then we let that sit for 30 seconds and we do another pour. Now, in terms of extraction or flow rate, what we can see now is that because we've taken out some of the very small particles, we actually have a slightly faster flow rate. Now, keep in mind that we already went a tiny bit finer to compensate for this because we don't want the water to go through too fast, right? Um, but still, we're getting a relatively fast brew time. So we're gonna look at a brew time here from between 2.10 and 2.30 instead of our traditional kind of 2.30 up to three minutes. So we are definitely brewing faster, which is quite interesting, right? Now, we've been playing around with this little tool for quite some time now, and it's definitely important to state that all of this comes kind of down to what is the character you want in your cup, right? We find, or I find, that when we take out too much of the small particles and too much of the big particles, we get a clean cup of coffee, but it's a very kind of one-noted, one-dimensional coffee. And I do prefer complexity. And there's no reason why you can't have a multiple range of particle sizes, get that complexity and still have a really clean cup of coffee at least when you're roasting as light as we do, then I don't really see an issue with it. So in general, whether or not it makes sense or not to use a sift, well, it's a fun thing. And I'm sure there's a lot of stuff you can do to kind of improve the quality. I'm especially quite interested in this separating out different particle sizes and then blending them back together in certain constellations. I think that's really interesting. It's also highly time consuming and quite difficult to be consistent, but it's definitely worth exploring. Um, so in general, what we're looking at here is basically we're adding effort to the coffee. And I think it's important that when we add an extra element in terms of an extra task that you have to go through to produce a cup of coffee, it has to be significantly better than when you're not using that tool, right? Uh, basically, the work you put in has to reflect what comes out of that cup of coffee. And I think in this case, we can make a tasty cup of coffee, uh, but we can make a tasty cup of coffee without it as well. So at the moment, I'm not necessarily sure that it justifies the works that comes into it. Now, you have a few other elements which is interesting, especially from a competition perspective, and that's the consistency aspect, right? So I like the idea of being able to control the amount of different microns that we have, which should in theory be able then to allow us to basically serve three cups of coffee that are very, very similar to the judges sitting in front of us, right? And we know that grind size is definitely a challenge for that. So are there aspects that make sense? With this, definitely. This is something that I would use at home continuously. Probably not. Would I put it on a bar? Probably not. Uh, but it's a fun thing, and I think there's definitely worth exploring. And we're going to come back to this, do more videos, especially when we have our new gadgets where 
we can actually then measure the difference in particle sizes, which will be, allow us to give you a bit more proper updates on this as well. And we can measure whether it actually matters to have more boulders, more fines in different ratios and percentages. So we will keep on exploring with this. We've already pushed out a Patreon video for those of you that want a bit more in-depth details. And as always, we're super excited to hear your thoughts on this. Is this something that you like to use at home? Have you used it? Is there other tools like this on the market that you think are interesting? Uh, please comment down below, subscribe, and make sure to have that kind of dialogue going because we're always really interested in hearing your opinions on it as well. With that, we want to thank you for watching and have a great day. We want to give a special thank you to all of our Patreon supporters. It's because of you that we are able to continue to make these videos. And we want you all to feel free to always come with suggestions and ideas on the content that you want to see uh, because we are doing this for you and because of you. Thank you from all of us here at April.